What's up guys? Welcome back to Newswave. Happy Spider-Man Day. If, if you've already gone out and grabbed Spider-Man, you've been playing it, let me know what you think about it down in the comments. I will be waiting by the door for my uh, Spider-Man Limited Edition PS4 Pro that's supposed to be coming today, and hopefully it does because it was, it was shipped like two days ago on Amazon, and if it gets here, we'll do a, a full unboxing, and maybe I'll even pop the top of it off to see if they've done any revisions to the PS4 Pro since I guess that's technically the newest PS4 Pro that they would have released, so keep an eye out for that, but uh, I'm very excited just to jump into Spider-Man and play it. I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. The reviews look good. Visually, it looks great despite all the downgrading controversy. You know, it just looks like it's going to be a fun time, and I'm looking forward to it. I was trying to get further into Dragon Quest. I'm like 15 or 16 hours in, uh, and th that's going to have to go on hold for Spider-Man because I've been waiting for this game for a long time long time. How many E3s has it been to? But uh, anyway, guys, we got some fun stuff to get into. I was waiting for a while uh, last night when I was working to record this because I was seeing if Nintendo was going to announce when the next Direct is going to be or when they're rescheduling it. Nothing yet. Uh, it, it could change overnight uh, by the time this is live and everything. So if it is, I'll do a follow-up like I did yesterday when it was delayed just to get, keep everyone up to date. And uh, whenever Nintendo is ready, they'll, they'll let us know when the, the Direct is rescheduled till. Now, today we have a lot of stuff to get into. I want to talk about some of the, uh, the leaks. There were, there were technically leaks Techly companies went forward with their announcements. We're going to go over that. Uh, nothing too crazy yet, although there's always Friday, and, uh, well, there, there's some stuff that I'm sure will probably get leaked out just because people can't help themselves. Otherwise, though, we have some other stuff to get into. First, we're going to get into some quick news. We're going to start with uh, something that I, I, have, I can't believe is real, but uh, Xbox Australia and New Zealand are actually going to be giving away grease-proof controllers as part of a contest. You're actually seeing uh, them here, and they're mostly uh, to promote, as you can see on their uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, that's actually for, like, apparently it, it's coated in, uh, in a urethane material that will apparently repel grease. So if you're, I guess, a person who is eating food while you're handling your controllers, uh, I, I guess stop doing that, but this would, I guess, help you with that, and you would be able to eat, as they say, chicken dinners or greasy buckets of KFC chicken as they show there uh, while you're playing it. Now this is going to be something they're going to be giving away through a contest that they're running so no way to actually buy it so it's going to be kind of hard to get otherwise and they're only producing 200 of them it's just it's it's very possible this could be a concept that Microsoft might actually run with in the near future so you know keep that in mind you might be able to get uh, Grease-proof Xbox One controllers if, if you just can't help yourself and you gotta play while you're apparently eating chicken. Also, if you are a fan of the Ace Attorney, the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney games, uh, you might want to get excited because it sounds like there is going to be a bit of a presence at Tokyo Game Show, which is coming up uh, in like two weeks or so. We're gonna have that. And it looks like, according to Capcom, there is going to be an unmissable, that's what they say, unmissable Ace Attorney uh, Phoenix Wright panel. And it sounds like there are going to be some announcements there. Now, the panel is going to be held September 22nd, starting 4 p.m. That's Japanese Standard Time, or that's Midnight Pacific Time, or 3 a.m. my time. So, I, I'll probably see this in the morning when I wake up. But it's expected to last about 40 minutes, and they're going to have... Uh, some of the big figures from the Ace Attorney series, uh, including uh, the, the producer and the game designer. So, yes, Capcom did say there will be presence in 2018 for this series, especially for the fans who really want there to be a presence and have actual games. I think we're going to see an announcement for the Switch, uh, possibly an announcement for the 3DS, since that seems to be an easy spot to put Phoenix Wright if they just want to have one there and then on the Switch. But uh, it makes sense right now for the Switch with the audience that it has really just garnered with the massive sales for the console currently currently, especially in Japan, where we just talked about it crossing 5 million units. So expect a Switch announcement. I think that it's actually conservative just to say one. You could have multiple Switch announcements from the uh, the Phoenix Wright, the Ace Attorney series, and uh, that wouldn't surprise me. All right, guys, some of the quick news out of the way. Let's jump into some of the bigger stuff. And we're going to start with a company that I keep telling you guys, if you've been watching uh, Newsway for a while, or you've been around the channel for a little while now, you, you always hear me bring up a certain company that is building heavily right now, and that's THQ Nordic. I bring them up all the time. We actually, remember, we talked about them picking up Time Splitters and Second site. They got the Red Faction series. They're working to do Darksiders 3 right now. There's a lot of stuff going on with THQ Nordic. Biomutant, they're really pushing and they're really collecting a lot of older IPs. And one that they collected yesterday kind of set the internet 
like going crazy over this IP that they picked up. That's Kingdoms of Amalar. And this was shocking for a lot of people. Now, I don't think this IP was worth a lot because of all the stuff. Oh man, it, it, this would make a great documentary. If I don't know if one's already been made somewhere. I'm sure YouTube, there's a lot of stuff kind of around it right now, but this would make probably a really good documentary like being professionally done, like uh, like one by Noclip or something, uh, because it, it, it it's a story. It's a story. It involves the, the state of Rhode Island, uh, the ex- uh, Major League pitcher Kurt Schilling and millions and millions of dollars and uh, uh, defaulted loans and it is crazy. But yeah, th this is something that people saw and got really excited for. See, Kingdoms of Amalar was kind of underrated. And I think a lot of that had to do with the promises they were making and, and just, again, the history of it and just the turmoil they went through. It was originally supposed to be like an MMO RPG and it, it was weird. Then it transitioned, they pulled like the single player part out and kind of turned it into almost like a like a fable action RPG style. But there were a lot of people that liked it, then a lot of people didn't. But it was kind of like, almost like this, this cult classic kind of that people were really into. And you could definitely see that yesterday when the internet went crazy over this, this announcement that THQ Nordic had acquired this game from uh, uh, 38 Studios or Studio 38. And uh, it, it was very, very weird to see. I remember at one point the IP was like left with the state uh, of, of Rhode Island because they defaulted on a loan and I guess Studio 38 got it back or who knows, who knows how all that went down. All we know now is THQ Nordic owns this IP and guess what they're gonna do with it. Just take a guess. They haven't announced anything, but I'll tell you right now what they're gonna do. They are going to repackage it. They are going to remaster it or they're just straight up gonna release it onto the current systems. That, that, that's what they do. They get these IPs, they take them, they remaster them fairly quickly. Like it's like, like Red Faction they put out. They didn't go through some crazy changes or anything. They upscaled to 4K. They made it look better and then they put it out and got a bunch of money back. That's what they're going to do here because this is an easy release. They, 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 you know, they spruce it up a bit. They make sure it works on the Xbox One, the PS4, uh, the Switch. Maybe they get away with another PC release. I don't know. You can already get it on PC and then it'll come out and they'll probably just put it on all the systems. So I guess if, if you wanted to play the game at one point and you missed out on it last generation or on the PC, I don't even think it takes much to run it. You could technically get it. Maybe you want it on your Switch or the PS4 Pro or the Xbox One X and 4K. I fully expect THQ Nordic to take this IP, flip it, and then just sell it. it and then just like that. And maybe they'll move on to a sequel. That's The sequel is something I, I expect for uh, time splitters currently. But yeah, don't be surprised if, if they take it, flip it, and uh, resell it. So hey, if you're excited for the idea of, of Kingdoms of Amalur to show up in this generation, possibly as a late release or a mid-life release for the Switch, and I guess get excited. So that Nintendo Direct was delayed. We went over that several times now, but things started to come out anyway. The first thing is Mega Man 11's demo did drop. Remember I was talking about that. That was part of my predictions video. There was a lot of stuff going around and we kind of put the pieces together and figured out, okay, Nintendo probably is going to get some kind of exclusive for this demo, which it appears they, they did. You can actually go download the Mega Man 11 demo right now on your Switch. And then it was like the following day. It was probably like a full 24 hour clause where then the other systems would get the demo. And it has a lot to do with Nintendo and, and Capcom kind of marketing this thing together. We have that, that bundle that comes with the Amiibo. It's, it's clear that I, Nintendo seems to be pushing it more than the other two systems. So it, it makes sense. I think this probably will sell best on the Switch because when I played the demo, it didn't seem like it was uh, like performance was fine. Visually, I thought it looked fine on my TV. It looks better on the Switch's screen. So yeah, I don't know why if the game runs the same across the, the board, really. I mean, probably 4K on the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X, which I guess I'll check out uh, today or over the weekend. So I'll get, I'll get the demo there and compare. I guess at that point, if you really don't leave your TV at all, you can just get it there. But these kind of games, I just, I'll pick it up on the Switch because it plays the same anyway. So uh, that was, that was one that just, they just announced it on Twitter. It was clear that it was going to be a, a thing on their direct where they're going to show a trailer and they say demo available now, kind of like what they did with Octopath. So that's out there. You can download that. The other one was weird because Nintendo appears to have accidentally leaked this out on their own website. And that was Yoshi's title. Do you remember how Yoshi originally 2018 pushes to 2019? We don't hear about it. We figure we're going to hear about it towards the end of this year, possibly in the direct that just was supposed to happen is now delayed, uh, or maybe a direct in January or something. It looks like they were probably going to talk about it in this direct, possibly with a release date, because as you're seeing here, Nintendo Wire actually spotted this and this was on their site. They pulled it down uh, fairly quickly, but 
coming 2019 Yoshi's Crafted World. And yeah, you know what? I think I'm okay with that title. Crafted World is good. There were some other ones. There's like, all the, remember all the rumored ones? It was like Yoshi's like flip out or something or, 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 or pop up or just a bunch of weird ones that have to do with like the fact that it kind of had that like that cardboard cutout kind of look to them. I, I like the idea of, of this where uh, it's called Crafted World. Obviously, the world behind him is like kind of like the pop-up book and stuff that's happening. And uh, it, I mean, the game looks cool and all, but that's I think that's a pretty good title. It's clear we're going to find out probably a release date for this thing. Uh, they didn't put up a release date on their site, so maybe they didn't want to drop that there. It was just going to be a graphic for it. And then after the direct, they were going to update it. But it's clear they already had the title and everything set up in their in their system. And it was pretty much probably on a schedule, to be honest. It just went up and then they had to pull it back down. But there we go. Now we know the title for Yoshi's, uh, their new 28 or 2019 game, Yoshi's Crafted World. And we'll have to see more gameplay, I guess. And really, we haven't seen much other than the initial reveal. And then Final Fantasy 15 Pocket Edition. I kind of told you guys after that icon leaked on the PS4 that it was showing up. Uh, it was clear that it was coming to the Switch after we saw that icon. And yeah, they decided to just go ahead and announce it in a reveal trailer. It is coming to all platforms. Xbox One, PS4, and Switch, at least at this time. Seems the Xbox One and the PS4 version are available now, right now, which is weird because the Switch version seems to be coming at a later date. Makes me wonder if the re release date is just part of the Direct and they're going to just put out a release date there. Maybe that's why they're not saying that and, you know, maybe they'll just drop it right there. It's hard to say. Maybe it'll come out this, uh, this winter time or something. It's weird that the Switch version would fall behind the other two because, I'm going to be honest, why would you buy it on the other two systems? You can get, you can get the, the full game cheaper. By the way, Square is charging $30 for this game. I saw that and I was like, ooh, $30, $29.99, man. Um, I, I guess if you add up the episodes and stuff, now I think it's still cheaper actually on the on the cell phone then. Yeah, $29.99, it's called Final Fantasy 15 Pocket Edition HD and currently it's 40% off. Uh, I saw this on the Xbox One, I think for the first like week or so and that brings it down to like $17.99 or so. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know. I would have, uh, you might as well just buy the regular one. I, it's, it's, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. It's like, I, I saw it on Redbox for like nine or $10. You can get it on Amazon for 14 for the full Final Fantasy 15 version. So if you're going to experience the game, I don't know why you wouldn't just get that one because it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's better. So I, I don't know. Maybe some people like the visuals of this one. It's just, it's weird that you would spend double the amount for that version as opposed to the full. It makes sense why I'd get on the Switch because it's the only version on the Switch at this time, but it does seem like there were issues in the background with Final Fantasy XV as we heard them even thinking about converting the entire thing to Unreal Engine 4, and that sounds like a pretty serious task. So at least for now, the Switch is getting that pocket edition, something that was theorized a lot, you know, last Gamescom and people weren't too happy with the idea. It is a reality. It's coming to the Switch. I don't know about the full version of 15. It sounded like there were a lot of problems, like I said. So uh, at least for now, the Pocket Edition is coming to the Switch at a later time. It could be could be in October. It could be once the Direct drops. So we'll, we'll have to see. And our last bit of news, let's quickly talk about the Call of Duty Blackout trailer that released because this pulled me back in. I played the beta for the just the standard multiplayer deathmatch and, and, and uh, objective-based stuff, and I was... I was lukewarm on it. I thought the time to kill was a little long, uh, and the, visually it, it didn't look that different from Black Ops 3, so it was, it didn't feel like a big upgrade or even a sequel, but Blackout has the chance to completely turn everything around. Remember I was telling you guys, I gotta see this Blackout mode before I give it, you know, final judgment or, or my final impressions or anything before we get the full game. We are getting that beta. It, it's happening on PlayStation 4 first, and we saw a full trailer and it looks awesome so far. I need to play it and see how it actually works out. And we got a bunch of information when they sat down and talked with Game Informer and they told them things like the amount of players that are gonna be on the map are gonna be starting with 80 players. They said it could go higher than that though. They, they even mentioned it go up to 115 players, which would actually eclipse that of things like Fortnite and Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. That, that actually sounds pretty cool. They showed even, uh, they tweeted out a screenshot of the map and it has a bunch of areas all the way around, similar again to Fortnite where they have things kind of uh, mapped out. And then they talked about the possibility of a split screen option for Blackout, which means I guess you and another person can be on the same screen playing in the same battle royale mode of up to, uh, you know, 80 to 100 something people if they get that far. That is cool. I like the idea of split screen if they can get that to work because 
if you and another person are doing like duos and you're going through, that would make it a lot easier if you could both play on the same screen because you could obviously see what each other's doing. But it looked great. They had people uh, just, just jetting all over the place. That's how you put a trailer together and get people excited. I feel like some people probably didn't completely know what was going on. I saw that a lot on Twitter that I have no idea what I just watched. It looked action packed. It looked like chaos. And I mean, that's supposed to be Battle Royale, right? It's every man for himself or it's every, every group for themselves. And uh, I'm ready to try this thing out. And it is coming next week, starting with the PlayStation 4. That's going to be September 10th. And then the Xbox One and PC owners can join in September 14th. And it's going to run up to September 17th. In order to get a beta code, according to Activision, you have to pre-order the game. And you'll get a code, probably similar to the multiplayer stuff. I assume if you already pre-ordered, they should have codes, I guess, for you as well. So you can, uh, you can jump into blackout mode and everything. It's going to be worth trying out. I will be trying it out, and I'll post my full impressions here. And we'll see if Call of Duty can really pull me back in with this mode. Uh, I haven't tried Zombies either, which, by the way, Zombies is in Blackout as well. It's interesting. So uh, this should be fun, hopefully, and I'll, I'll let you guys know how what I think about it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for Newswave today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you guys hit the like button if you like this video. Dislike it if not. Leave comments below about everything we talked about today, whether it's Nintendo's Direct getting delayed. What do, you, what do you think? At this point, if we haven't heard about it, when do you think it's going to be? And what do you think about some of the smaller things that have leaked out? I'll tell you guys this. There's still a lot of stuff they have to show, so don't get too worried about some of the big, if that was the bigger stuff, they're in trouble. No, there's still some stuff that they have not shown that should get people excited, so don't worry about that. But let me know what you think about what you've seen so far. What do you think of Kingdoms of Amalur getting picked up by THQ Nordic? Would you like to see that come back on the Switch, PS4, Xbox One? Let me know, guys, down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.